What's up again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Dice Masters Hall of Fame. This is an ongoing series honoring the influential, legendary, meta-defining cards of the past. If you're new to the game of Dice Masters, this is a great series to familiarize yourself with the powerful cards that have come before and may want to consider scooping up if you ever have the chance. This is also a great opportunity for us all to remember the cards that crossed that very fine line from powerful to game-breaking. So after much thought, I've decided that today's inductees will be those cards that crossed the line and earned themselves a spot on the Dice Masters ban list. Let's begin. The first card that we're going to talk about is Relentless. Relentless is a basic action card that at first seems fairly tame, until you read the global ability that is. The global says pay a mask, target character die cannot block. Notice that that ability does not say once per turn. Nowhere in the ability does it limit the amount of times that that global may be used. So, if you were to construct an aggro team with a bunch of powerful two drops like, I don't know, say, Black Widow Sarina, buy up a bunch of her, feel as many of her as you can, and then roll all of your extra dice for masks. You can pay three masks, four masks, however many character dice that they have in the field, prevent them from blocking your attackers, and just straight up win. Relentless and its partner in crime with the same global, Swords of Revealing Light, were so game-breaking that they prompted the creation of the Dice Masters ban list in the first place. These globals warped the meta so far in favor of aggro that the game just would not have survived had it stuck around. This card serves as a lesson as to how powerful globals can be in this game, and why things at global speed are much more powerful than things at fielded speed or anything else. The next card on this list is one that some love and many love to hate. Half Elf Bard, Master Lords Alliance. So funny story about this card, when this set released there was a lot of hype about one of the other Half Elf Bards in this set. Both of the Bards were present in the starter set and it took a month or so for the Master Lords Alliance card to catch on. Bard broke onto the scene in mid-2016 where it dominated multiple WKOs on its way to being the most played card at the 2016 National and World Championships. I remember watching the stream coverage of both of those competitions and being absolutely floored by the sheer speed and power of the card. This card almost single-handedly allow you to win the game on turn three with a fair bit of consistency. It was an extremely predictable and powerful card. I remember watching people in the National and World's competition just concede on turn two or turn three because the opponent landed the die when they didn't and they just knew the game was over. And at the time there really was no way to just deal with this outright. You kind of had to hope that they missed the roll or that you rolled it faster than they did. It was just a really poor meta in Dice Masters and it caused a lot of people to actually leave the game. This card was just so powerful, so polarizing, and generally so unfun to play against. I will say I think WizKids took far too long to actually ban this card and it cost them in players of the game, but it was eventually banned in modern age. The last card on this list is also the most recent addition to this ban list and one that I've discussed and used on this channel multiple times. This is Cosmic Cube Energy of the Beyond. If you're very new to the game of Dice Masters, you may recognize this card, and if not, then you must be really new because this card dropped only last year, and it was towards the end of the year at that. Now there is some controversy as to whether or not this card or Yanti Pureblood should have been banned, and looking at the current competitive meta, it's full of Yanti Pureblood even now, so perhaps WizKids made the wrong choice. Nevertheless, this card is extremely polarizing, is extremely powerful, it encourages a lot of direct damage teams to just rule the roost and overpower things that are looking to deal physical damage. It takes decently powerful burn abilities and makes them something to look at. Case in point, the King Black Bolt combo team that I ran about a year ago in one of the online tournaments. And it makes already powerful combos like Yanti Pureblood insanely game-breakingly powerful. WizKids was right to ban one of these two cards, either Yanti or Cube, and choosing to ban Cube makes the possibility of a more varied meta more likely. So whether it be in fame or infamy, these three cards deserve to be remembered. What do you think of the inclusion of these three cards in the Hall of Fame? Do you think they should be included and remembered as the the other popular cards are? What cards do you see still deserving of a spot in the Hall of Fame? Let me know in a comment below, and as always, thanks for watching.